Every day in 2020, we've been bombarded by data viz, whether it's through government's daily briefings or through news stories, we've seen data visualizations everywhere. Um, you know, it's obviously part of our daily lives as professionals as well. You know, we all know that a, a table doesn't work as well as a good graph. So what can we learn from the pandemic in terms of our own data visualizations? What works, what doesn't work? What what, uh, what is the power of good data viz? I'm here with Andrew Pemberton, Director from UK Data Visualization Agency, further to discuss the power of good data viz. So Andrew, what role does data viz played in influencing the public during the pandemic? Well, I think the first thing to say is that the data visualization has, has, has never been more public than it is now. So it's, everybody knows what a line graph looks like. Everyone knows what a bar chart looks like. Everyone knows what data visualization is because it's all about these infection rates. And we've been staring at them the whole time. And so they're kind of like a speedometer almost like how fast are we going? Should we be going slower? Should we be going faster? And, and the whole country really is staring at these things. So they've never been as important or widely understood ever, I think, I would say, in the history of data visualization as they are now. Um, if I could sort of share an example with you, at the very start of a, a pandemic, um, excuse me, the lockdown, which started about March, didn't it? Um, we, there was a chart went round called the hammer and the dance. And it looked like this, you can see it here. And this was an incredibly powerful chart because what it told us, as you can see, is that unless uh, the UK in particular locked down, we could expect uh, the rising cases of COVID-19 to sort of skyrocket, uh, which would in turn lead to, I think they were saying, up to half a million deaths. And this is what suddenly kind of like a, was like a big wet kipper in the face of the government who suddenly woke up and said, oh my God, you know, we've got to lock down. And what the hammer in the dance tells us is that if we lock down, we can get a control of all these uh, cases, and if we continue to lock down, but, but sort of slightly relax things, we have this other period after the lockdown called the dance, where uh, it goes up a bit, but not too much, and we're able to get a control of things. And in the meantime, you can do open loads of hospitals and make sure we've got the proper care for, for people suffering from COVID. So this, I think, was a sort of, will be burned in lots of people's minds. I mean, I posted this on my LinkedIn profile. I got 11,000 views. That's a lot for me. Uh, I didn't make it, obviously, um, but it was a kind of widely understood uh, explanation of what the heck's going on. You know, why have we locked down? Where's it going to go? Uh, and there were lots of questions in the public mind. So I think this is a great illustrative example of a very, very powerful, but very, very simple piece of data viz that kind of settled a lot of accounts, if you like, and made everybody understand at least the theory. And of course, the practice has turned out to be somewhat different, hasn't it? And essentially, uh, we're about to go back into um, a massive spike in uh, cases. And then it begs the question, well, what do you do next? But that's where we are right now. Okay, so, so obviously in that context, why is it so important to get data visualization right in, uh, at the moment? Um, I think it's important to get data visualization right, right now is because everybody's looking at it and it has an impact on behavior. I mean, that's sort of, that's the ultimate goal of all data visualization. It's supposed to make you change your behavior or alter your behavior or think about something in a different way. But we're always seeking behavior change. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But right now, it can work almost uh, too well. And a really good example, I think, I'm gonna try and show you now, is um, something that's happened in Israel. So in it, just, just like us, all around the world, people are having local lockdowns. And uh, in Israel, they wanted to show who were sort of, who had the most cases and who had the least cases and they used a sort of color coding mechanism and obviously the red is lots of cases orange less cases green not so many cases and these were the the, the, the ones with red obviously suffered the worst um, restrictions but the problem that occurred of course was that not only if you were in a red area were you upset because you had to kind of you had more cases and you're suffering all these restrictions you'd actually been sort of color coded red which is uh, deliberately emotive uh, color and so say I'm in red and you're in green, I feel it's sort of compounding feelings of frustration or being picked on, something that you know, we've had this week with Manchester. And so um, in a weird way, I think this speaks really effectively to the power of data visualization, the emotional power of data visualization, because not only does it give you the information, it tells you how to feel. And not too happy, 
is the uh, is, is the general is the is the general gist. So what we can see here uh, for the England map, instead of traffic lights, instead of using these kind of vibrant colours that we all understand have meaning, but are actually kind of quite shocking, red being very emotive colour, they've chosen a really neutral color, which is brown, which has almost no emotional content really. Uh, for instance, which is better, light brown or dark brown, it's hard to say. And they use that to show um, uh, the rate change uh, in COVID-19 across the UK. Also gonna show another map, and this one is from the Financial Times, and this is a map of Italy, which is again showing the worst outbreaks of COVID-19. And what, what the Financial Times has done is they've used deep pink, uh, for the worst outbreaks and light pink for the rest. And then what you'll see when you look at the map is it feels under control. It's under, it's under formal control, like it looks good, but it's under emotional control because they're only trying to tell you one emotional story. They're not tipping loads of color on. So when you make a chart, I strongly advise one color, different shades. So, so who's been getting it right and who's been getting it wrong? So um, I think if you're looking for sort of a consistent best practice in data viz, you'd have to go to the New York Times, I think. They're definitely the leaders. Um, they invest in it and they've been doing great work around coronavirus. What I notice uh, in the case of the New York Times is they didn't click through. It's all scroll. So presumably it's for phones right, on your phone. So anyway, yeah, they're, 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 if you're looking for the best practice, they're really good. The Financial Times are really good. BBC are very good. So you've been giving us a, a, advice over how to how to do these data uh, well across this conversation. You know, what, what other lessons should uh, accountants and finance professionals take away from all of this? Well, I think what, what really I think is a helpful way to think about data visualization is think of your chart or your bar chart or whatever it is you're making as a delivery mechanism. And what it's delivering is an idea. And you want it to be one idea because people can only really pick up one idea at a time. If I threw a load of pens at you, 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 you could probably only grab like maybe one. And then if you grab that pen, it might not be the pen that I really needed you to, to catch. So a better strategy would be to me to throw one pen and you'd catch it. And so I would say with your data visualization, throw one pen. Don't throw everything you've got, just throw the one thing you want to say. And then if you've got another idea, put that in a separate chart. The chart delivers the headline. The purpose of the chart is to deliver a headline. The headline needs to be a conclusive point. It needs to be the conclusion. It's not widget sales 2019. That's not the headline. The headline is widget sales are up. So write the conclusion of the data, show me a chart that supports that conclusion, and the job is done. Don't add, add, add. What actually happens is like a boat, it starts to sink if you add things. Take things off, throw one pen, they catch the pen, it's all done. Another way to think about it is, imagine, you know, you've been through this COVID thing and how quickly messages become confused. How people sort of, you say one thing, then another, let's not worry about whose fault it is. The fact of the matter is, you have to kind of be super duper clear in your messaging because people get the wrong end of the stick so easily. Don't offer them two ends of the stick, just offer one end of the stick. And even then they might get confused. So, keep it simple, throw one pen. Conclusion goes first, not last. Yep, brilliant, lots of analogies, but uh, all, uh, all great stuff. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, that's a really fascinating conversation, Andrew, thank you. You're welcome.